The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 861 Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host, Sheena Yapchan, and today I have a phenomenal woman on the show today. She is the Chief Empowerment Officer at See The Way Consulting, and I'm super excited to have her on to share her story with us today on self-confidence. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Penny Way. Penny, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to the listeners. Hi, thank you so much, Sheena, for having me on your show. It's an honor to be here. I run a company called See The Way Consulting, and I do personal transformation, professional and personal development, hypnotherapy, executive coaching to help people reach their potential and overcome obstacles and remove and heal all past trauma in their lives so that they can move more boldly in the direction of their dreams. From from that, you know, I do workshops and private coaching one-on-one. And primarily also with the Asian Pacific American community as well, since I'm, I'm a part of that community. And for me, I'm very passionate about helping our community overcome its obstacles and intergenerational trauma and legacies that we pass down from generation to generation. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. So good to have you. And, you know, talking about those topics like intergenerational trauma is so important. Um, It's one of the topics that I share in my upcoming book under the same title as the podcast. And, you know, it's these things that our parents don't talk about that needs to be addressed, right? So I love that you work with that as well. And Penny, what's your cultural background? I'm Chinese American. Thanks for sharing that. What'd be your favorite self-confidence quote? I guess the quote would be something by George Bernard Shaw. He's one of my favorite authors. He often talks about things in depth that help people sort of really think about their life, their place in it, and where you're going to go and how you're going to get there. So this is the quote that I love. It's called, imagination is the beginning of creation. You imagine what you desire. You will, you will what you imagine. And at last, you create what you will. And the reason why I love it is because I think every each person has a spark of intuition, inspiration within themselves, and it's our job to actually tap into it. And as it's collected, you know, connected to the collective unconscious in the universe. But a lot of times, when we can't get to the next step in our goals or our life, you know, it has to do with your opinion about yourself and also your will. So a lot, what I do as a hypnotherapist is I help people increase their motivation and their will. And because whatever your mind can see and believe you can achieve and whatever you can achieve in your life has to do with your ability to believe in yourself as well. And so if you, you, you connect your intuition with your will, then, then you're, you can be a prow- powerful creator and whatever you believe in, whatever you see in your mind, you plant the seed of change in your subconscious mind. And then you start willing things to happen. You start moving forward through calculated and strategic action, but also in the direction of your dreams through your belief in yourself as well. I love that quote. And it's so true, right? Imagination is what starts everything, right? We picture something in our head, and then we find the tools and resources to make that imagination into reality, right? You know, the iPhone wasn't the iPhone because it just came out of nowhere. It came through someone's imagination, someone's mind, and then found a way to make it happen. And look where the iPhone is today. Every year there's a new iPhone and we all get crazy and line up for the new iPhone. So I love that quote. And in your own words, how do you define self-confidence? I think self-confidence is the innate ability to believe in yourself and everything that you have to offer the world, you know, when you figure out what your purpose is on this planet and how you're supposed to contribute, I think that adds to your self-confidence as, as well. I think it's having self-worth and believing that you are worth it, whatever it is that you're doing in your life and whatever it is that you want to achieve, that you are worth it, whether it's love, whether it's something in your professional life and career that you know inside because of your pure existence here on this planet, that you are deserving of the very best life possible. So I think confidence for me is not just like being comfortable in your own skin, especially as a woman and feeling empowered in it, but also believing that no matter what happens in your life, you know, because you're going to have some failures, 
and you're going to have some highs and lows that you can always overcome them and reinvent yourself and rise to the top of whatever it is that you imagine for yourself. So I think I think it's all of that. And and that t- just takes time to develop and retain because I think confidence doesn't come overnight. It, it's a it's a process and it's an evolution of your own being. I love that. And it's so true. Every day we go through confidence challenges, roadblocks, and this is why it's important to build on it every single day. It's like working out, right? You're building your confidence muscles so you become stronger and better and you can learn how to handle situations when they arise. And yeah, having that innate belief is so important because without that, you're not going to go out there and take action. I know we've probably heard that a million times, but I know we're reminded by that every day, right? Or a million times, but there's a reason why, because it really does start there. And then we figure out how we, you know, turn that belief into reality. So I love that definition. And Penny, what was your life like before you discovered self-confidence? You know, as a young person, sort of trying to figure things out, like where you're going to go. I, th- I think that part, you know, when you are a very young person, you don't have the self-confidence that you you would normally have as, you know, as a person in a, as a person in their 40s and 50s or 60s. I think that's why it's such a journey, especially for women. What was my life like? I think I was like, trying to figure it out, like trying to figure out what my path was and trusting my inner guidance and my my instincts to lead me to the next step I needed to take to get to where I wanted to go, you know? So I I think it's also like my life before having self-confidence, it'd be a journey of discovery, journey of discovery, discovering yourself, discovering like what it is that you want, who you are, where you're going to go in life, where you want to be. And then once you're very clear about that, I feel like everything sort of comes into alignment and, and then you just start moving forward like a rocket. So I I think, and then I think before having self-confidence, I think it's also a journey where you're, you doubt yourself sometimes and it's not as happy. And once, once you have that, at least a belief in yourself and who you are, you become a happier person, I think. And I think that just takes time just through growing up and you become more grounded in who you are. And then I think because of that, then life becomes more manageable. So that's what I would say. Yeah, I know as as we're young, we're trying to figure out who we are, what we stand for, you know, like who is Penny, who is Sheena, you know, who are we like, especially trying to detach from all the status symbols and the titles, especially in an Asian culture. You know, we're always taught to do one way, live one way of life, especially Asian women and anything outside of that is deemed shameful. So a lot of women out there are afraid to do something outside of that because, you know, they don't want to tarnish the family name. They don't want to shame their family. It's going to look bad. People are going to talk. Um, and so it, it takes a lot to like go out there and just pave your own way. And so what was that aha moment in your life when you realized you wanted to do something different? You wanted to pave your own way and be the entrepreneur that you are today. I think I, it was when I was working in the entertainment business and doing business development in also the nonprofit art space. And there was something in me that decided that it wasn't using all of my skills, abilities, or talents, to, you know, my full potential as a human being and what I wanted to leave as a legacy for others, you know, or even my children or my future children. At that time, I wasn't, I didn't have a child. And now I have a a 12 year year old daughter. So at that time, I thought I've always been a natural caregiver. And my aha moment was like, you've always wanted to be able to kind of serve the world in a larger capacity and do what you're naturally really good at. And I think for me, it was always working in the space of of like personal transformation. And then that's when I took a leap of faith and went back to study hypnotherapy, get certified as a clinical hypnotherapist and become a motivational speaker because of that too. And so I could serve more people. And and if I do any work in the media now, it's all related to that some aspect of transformation or innovation or, you know, ways to help improve people's lives. And I think that that for me is mostly my lasting legacy. So the aha moment came to me when I felt like I was working in a space where I wasn't really making as much of a difference as I'd like to be in this world, because I think we want to leave this world a better place than when we came, right? And 
I want to leave it better for my daughter and the next generation. And so I, I think that's why I, t- I changed careers. Don't get me wrong. You know, media is a very pl- powerful platform. It could be used in many ways, you know, such as you're doing and I'm doing now with my podcast, you know, and that's how I launched my podcast, See the Way with Penny Way, so that I could spread a more positive message and reach more people. And I think lead more light in this world. We need more light. You know, like what all of us are doing right now, we're trying to do that. You know, this is a safer and brighter and a better place and that people are a lot more evolved and there's more peace in the world. So. Yeah, for sure. I love that. And, you know, I love that you mentioned because of your purpose, right? Some people um, don't realize how powerful a purpose can be. And, you know, having purpose is how you can build confidence. You can pave the way, especially for a community, for more Asian women to have a better world out there so that they didn't have to go through what we go through and being able to create like your podcast like, and your consulting company, like see the way, right? We see that way to better worlds, right? A better future. And I love it because, I mean, some people don't understand how powerful that purpose is because when times are tough, like you have to go back to why are you doing what you're doing, right? And then when you go back to that, uh, everything makes sense. And whatever hardships come our way, we just push forward, right? Because that's what really entrepreneurship is anyway, right? It's not fancy cars and big houses. It's like 24 hours of work in a day, maybe, you know, no sleep, knocking on doors, you know, getting rejected a bunch of times, but uh, it's all worth it when you can see the fruits of your labor. And because of that realization, what's your life been like now? It's been a journey of, again, always like self-discovery, because I feel like that's our, that's our purpose also on this planet to, to continue to evolve. But it's been great because I think when you have your purpose, you are grounded in, in a, in a very, very singular vision. And it helps you make decisions that with more clarity. And I, I feel like life is so more, much more joyful because I know what I'm doing when I wake up in the morning. And I know how I'm going to end the day. And in between, I balance it with my personal life as well. But everything's centered around this purpose. So discovering that, I feel like, is the most important thing for most people. And if they haven't found it, that's okay, too, because you'll get there. And it's it's always connected to your passions, like whatever your passions and your skill set are, and finding a way to kind of make it happen uh, and and being very, very persistent about it. So I think knowing my purpose now means like every day I'm working at the goal of achieving this, that, or whatever, you know, like you, you have your book coming out and I'm writing a book now too. So it's like every day I wake up having to, to, to work on these goals. And because of that, it makes life more meaningful. So, and I I feel like if I were to, if God took me away at any moment, at least I feel like I've been fulfilling my purpose, but I have so much more to do. So it's like, you know, all of us, I feel like should have that sort of mindset that our time is limited here. Really, it's really limited. Like nobody can escape mortality, right? So if you, if you think about it that way, it helps you sort of be crystal clear about decisions in your life means like getting rid of toxic people, getting rid of toxic situations, like really letting go of anything that's not going to serve you and your purpose, right? And your life and your happiness and your joy. And then, you know, you make decisions on your business as well with more clarity. Like, do I want to work with this person, this deal, this this group, whatever, whatever direction you need to go in, you should go in the direction of your purpose and your passion and your joy. Thanks for sharing that. If our listeners were listening to your episode and they were in their own journey of self-confidence, what would be that one tip you would give to them? Okay. I would say, don't let anyone else define who you are. Listen to the beat of your own heart, the inner voice, the inner wisdom, the inner guidance within you, because it's always connected to a higher source. And there's nothing wrong in being a completely unique person that does something very different, especially if you're Asian American and you're listening to this, because I think oftentimes we are trying to meet the expectations of our parents and we want to honor them and their journey, their sacrifice for bringing us to where we are in our life. But we also are living a, a, an individual singular journey. So it's very important to listen to that inner guidance, to listen to what it is that makes them happy, whatever it is that that voice in you that wants you to expand and fulfill 
your goal. So I would say like, that would be the most important thing, because that's going to lead you to everything else, you know, all your other joys in life, and and even great love in life as well, to listen to that intuition, inner guidance and that wisdom. And because of that, when you do that, and, you, and things start opening up, doors opening, are opening up, it builds your self confidence, and you, you start trusting yourself more. And when you trust yourself more, you have more clarity. And then when you have more clarity, you have more direction and purpose and and then you can go confidently in the direction of your dreams. Thanks for sharing that great tip. And if our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit about you and what you do or check out some of your services or your podcast, is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? Yes, of course. I'm at pannyway.com. That's spelled P-A-N-N-E-Y-W-E-I.com. And on all the social media, Instagram, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, and even TikTok. I'm all at Panny Way. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. For our listeners, if you want to connect with Panny, you can also head on over to the towelselfconfidence.com and search for Panny's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else that we talked about. And I really just want to thank Panny today for taking the time to share her story and wisdom with us on self-confidence. So thank you so much, Panny. Thank you so much for having me. It was such a fun half hour with you. Not a problem. It's such an honor to have you on the show. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of The Tao of Self-Confidence. You can order your copy of Asian Women Who Boss Up Book by visiting our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. 